But joining us now from Los Angeles is the musician Moby, who sold more than 20 million albums worldwide. Good evening. Um, Hi, when, how are you? Uh, very well. When you um, heard the foals there talking last night at Mercury, saying that you know it, the, the artists receive an immoral amount and the royalty rate is so poor by and large, um, do you think he has a point? I think um, what the journalist was also talking about, it's hard to generalize because a lot of that has to do with the artist's relationship with their record company. So I think some artists are making more money from Spotify than others. So it's, it's hard to come up with like a comprehensive, generalized, amoral or moral statement about the royalties people are receiving. Well, the more powerful the band and the better the deal, the deal they do with a record company, obviously the better their mm -hmm. rate will be when it comes to Spotify. Uh, you've gone down a different road now because your new album, The Innocents, you're going to be I issuing that, that's going to be a download, that's going to be streaming. Is that the way of the future? Well, I mean, my, I don't know, maybe I'm kind of a simpleton, but my feeling is that like musicians, their main job should be like trying to make really wonderful music that they love and that hopefully other people love. And of course you have to like figure out how to pay the rent and be fiscally responsible, but the goal should really be focusing on the music. And one of the things that I love about the digital present that we live in, you know, with institutions like Spotify or SoundCloud or YouTube, is it's almost like this democratic anarchy. You know, it's very chaotic. You put music out into the world and you have no idea how people are going to yeah. experience it or listen to it. And I actually find that really compelling. It's comp I mean, I, I, I accept that argument. And funnily enough, you know, Lou Reed always said that it didn't matter about the business, it mattered about the music. But you, in a sense, could speak from the advantage of somebody who sold 20 million albums worldwide. The young band from Manchester were there was saying that the people that really win out with Spotify are the investors and the music uh, labels. But very rarely the artists, if they're only cutting deals where they might only be getting, you know, 7%, not 70%. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's also the way that technology advances, I mean, it's always like, I don't know, the state of technology six months from now, a year from now, five years from now, might make Spotify look very antiquated. Mm -hmm. So I think having too strong of an opinion about a streaming service like Spotify, I mean, you look at like, it's kind of like having a strong opinion about Napster, which now barely mm -hmm. exists. Um, and I really feel like, I don't know, when I see people criticizing the digital present in which we live, it kind of reminds me of like old guys yelling at trains going <laughs> but, too fast. But it's, like, you there's, talk about, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. But you talk about Napster, yes, which was absolutely a flash in a pan. Do you think Spotify is only on the way to somewhere else, that actually this is only a very uh, shallow stepping stone? Um, it's almost impossible to say because so many of us are accustomed to owning music, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but yet, there, yet there's an entire new generation of people where it would never even cross their minds to own music. And it's this weird overlap between the two because I find the people complaining about Spotify, like they're not complaining about the same music being played on the radio. No. And yet that same music is coming out of the same speakers. So I, under, I don't understand why people but expect but the, but the different compensation from the same music regardless yeah. of how it's being presented. It, 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 yes, and that I think it, I, I, you, interesting what you're saying, that being a generational thing, the idea of the album is that you know, they're creating, in a sense, they're creating their own sense of music you know, by whatever they're, you know, they're streaming, downloading. And so mm -hmm. does that essentially mean that the idea of a curated piece of, uh, a series of uh, pieces of music, like an album, is essentially going to be kind of, you know, an old man, an old woman's tool? Uh, I mean, I'm speaking as an old man, I so know. of course I'm biased. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, I think that there's room for things to coexist. Like you can have, I mean, I look at the world of book publishing mm -hmm. and like some things just show up on a digital e-reader you read it and you throw it away and you never think about it. But then if you really love a book, maybe you want the hardcover version, maybe so, you want a coffee table version of it. So I think with, with music, like there might be some disposable pop songs that you stream a few times and never think about. But then when your favorite band puts out a new album, you might actually want to buy some sort of archival version of it. So what, but what do you want as an, I know, not you personally, what would one want as an artist? Do, does the artist want to be, you know, the five times played pop song or the cherished album that they'll have for 20 years? I think that's up to the individual artist. I mean, I think some people, their ultimate goal is to just have that quick disposable pop song and then other people want to make albums that people might go back to 50 years hence.
And you and, and the other thing, of course, you do is you put it out there that almost that whoever's listening to it can make changes and curate it in their own way. Do you think that actually is the future? Yeah, I just did a thing with an organization called BitTorrent yeah. where we took the individual tracks from each song from my album, so like the drums, the vocals, the bass, and released them as multi-tracks where anybody for free can download it, remix it, and pretty much do whatever they want with it. And I, again, I love that democratic chaos. You know, the fact that you put this music out into the world and once it leaves my hands, I don't own it and I can't control it. And I personally, maybe there's something wrong with me. I love the lack of control that I have over music once I put it out into the world. A great luxury. Thank you very much indeed, Moby.